Hello and welcome to another episode of TFG Tackles. It's a nice and sunny morning out here in uh, Mumbai. Kevin is with me. Kevin, the national team, the Indian national team for the Intercontinental Cup that's going to happen right here in Mumbai. Get excited. 1st June to 10th June. But the team has come out. People are not getting really excited about that. Why? No, I think uh, if people have access to a lot of WhatsApp groups, uh, they will really know what is the reaction that, that many are feeling it, feeling through or looking at the list, which does not start with Sumit Pasi's name. How come does how come there is no Sumit Pasi? I mean, he's the closest thing we have to Messi. We keep saying it again and again. We cannot win a single game out there without Pasi. No, let, let's not uh, no, revolve too much about about Pasi not being there. I think uh, uh, what we've seen is uh, a squad that is. It's refreshing. I would say it's refreshing. But you no, know, there are a few surprises that are there and some surprise omissions as well. Now we will talk about that. Uh, what is your initial thought uh, when you did look at the draft, uh, the 30-man squad that was out? First thing I noticed. First thing, Subrata Paul and Sanjeevan Ghosh both are playing in Jamshedpur FC. Most of the games played by Subrata Paul. As usual, Subrata Paul plays for a team with uh, a shit attack and you know mediocre defense. He carries the team throughout ISL. Guess who gets picked for the national team? Not so brother Paul, Sanjeevan Ghosh. Does that make sense? Did Sanjeevan get a red card? Somewhere, probably. I don't remember it off the top of the mind. Sumitra got a red, a red card. I think that is the reason that he's not in the squad. And uh, that that even omits that he was part of the last uh, uh, AFC Asian Cup that we made made it past uh, you know, some difficult stages. Uh, obviously, we didn't get a point after that. But Subrat Paul should have been there, I feel. Yeah, well, uh, I don't uh, care about red cards at this point because, you know, Subrat Paul is not going to be usually the first choice keeper. Uh, you want to take him along in the squad uh, because he brings that, uh, you know, that experience. He brings that uh, presence to the team. Him and uh, Sunil are the only current players that we have who were part of the 2011 Asian Cup campaign. Uh, Paul had a very standout performance uh, in that uh, last uh, Asian Cup tournament. So not having him is is a is a bit of uh, bit discouraging. But again, this is not an Asian Cup squad. This is for the Intercontinental Cup. Maybe he just wants to see Sanjeevan goes, give him a chance. But is is it does it make sense to do it here, or should he have done it in the soft championship, which is anyway a good ground for testing youngsters? Yeah, but uh, no, this is also a part of the preparation. If you were going to play teams like uh, Kenya, Chinese Taipei, and New Zealand, uh, you don't get that chance in the soft championship. Now, if you're going to test a squad which is close to uh, what what we might face in the a AFC Asian Cup. I think this was a tournament to test it out. Mm, yeah, of course. The entire goalkeeping uh, squad that has been picked up is Gurpeet Singh Sandhu, Vishal Ket, Amrinder Singh uh, gets a look-see once again and uh, Sanjeevan Ghosh. Uh, these are the four goalkeepers who will be in Mumbai uh, when India takes on uh, three opponents in the Intercontinental Cup. Uh, in the face, if, when, if, if we are just trying to test ourselves against uh, a team like New Zealand, you know, you 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 will assume that Gurpreet Singh Sandhu is out there, right? It does it make sense to take somebody like Sanjeevan Ghosh just to play him against uh, maybe uh, uh, Chinese Taipei? And even if you are trying out a new squad against Chinese Taipei, does Sanjeevan Ghosh make sense? No, definitely not a chance for Sanjeevan to make it to the first level or even make an appearance there. Uh, but you know, over the years, uh, being at press conference at, uh, at at the national camp. We've heard this, you know, one statement being put out uh, usually is that you know players that are part of the camp are usually not the ones who will be selected you know, further down. But it's more, more, uh, it's part of the policy saying that these are the players that uh, the national team cares about, and we keep bringing them back for one reason that just to show them that we are part, uh, that you, we do care about them. And Samit Pasi, uh, Sanjeevan Ghosh might probably fit in that bill. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing. Uh that we should mention is that this now makes the team selection really uh, interesting because usually when you have uh, Subrata Paul also in the squad, you know if Gurpreet is not playing, the chance is going to go to Subrata. Now that Subrata is not there and if uh, India wants to go with a young, uh, less experienced team against Chinese Taipei, now we have something to uh, you know work our heads on. Who's going to get that chance? Do you think it's going to be Vishal Kaith or Amrinder? No, definitely Amrinder because we've seen Vishal Kaith, uh, no just come up to the ranks of uh, being that young keeper and he's actually proved himself quite a bit uh, but I don't, I'm not sure if he's in the right frame to get that chance to make it ahead of Amrinder.
Yeah, well, of course, uh, that's the situation with the goalkeepers. We got the defenders also out there. Lalru Thara uh, is still here. Uh, Davinder Singh, new name. Uh, Pritam Kotal, uh, Anna said Atolika, obviously. Sundesh Jingan, uh, we have to have him there. Salam Ranjan Singh is back. Uh, Jerry Lalrinzwala, of course. You were waiting for that. Uh, Narayan Das and Subhashish Bose. Who's missing out? Rahul Beke? Yeah, well, yeah, Rahul Beke is, I don't know what he has to do to get in there. Just has to play his heart out every single time. Just never gets through. Constantine just doesn't seem to know he's a, he exists at this moment. Uh, well, uh, Rahul Beke has uh, has been a standout performer, not for just for the, uh, you know, e- in the domestic season. Uh, even uh, at the AFC Cup level, uh, he I, I think he's proved himself already. Uh, but here we are looking at a, a team which is, you know, getting in Davinder Singh. Uh, probably a season for him uh, to forget. Uh, Mumbai City re- really did not do anything well in uh, the ISL, uh, being the t- t- league leaders last time around. But I really feel uh, Rahul Beke should have earned his place at least in the camp, if not in the final 11 uh, in uh, in the upcoming tournament. Before we move into the midfield section, you know, it's always going to be the most uh, juicy section to talk about in terms of selection. But, uh, you know, there are two players, uh, you know, there's uh, Seriton Fernandez, uh, who was playing really well out there. Uh, and there's Adil Khan. These guys have been playing as defenders. They have also played as midfielders at some point. Why do you think uh, they did not make the cut? Uh, no, people have started talking about Adil Khan right now because he's part of the ISL. Uh, but you no, know, if you've heard our podcast, I've always talked about I talked about high about the qual- talent that he had uh, when he played for Churchill Brothers. Uh, Mohan Bagan also. Huh? Yeah, and you know he he is one versatile player who, who can just you know handle your defense single-handedly. And where you have Anas Adhortika, uh, who's not been at his best, you know, he's been through that phase where that partnership between him and Jingle, Jingle has not been you know, the the best that we wanted uh, want to see. Uh, Adil Khan could have made it at this camp and probably have had a test uh, to partner him with uh, Jingan, but I don't know what uh, you know what made uh, him not being picked. And Seretan Fernandez is another player where we've seen uh, him play at Churchill Brothers. Derek Pereira made use of him uh, very well. You know, after he was brought in, he he made him play at a different position uh, out of defence and really work for the team. So he he could have been uh, you know a multiple uh, role player to have in the team. Probably this was one camp. Again, I, I wouldn't speak high about Serenin Fernandez uh, as much as ha- Adil Khan. Yeah, well, uh, these are just potential names. Maybe, uh, you know, it makes more sense for to sip Stephen Constantine. We're not trying to second guess him at this moment uh, to get these uh, guys uh, into the national team for the South Championship uh, as a youth testing ground. Uh, you have to remember these two c- tournaments are happening very close to each other. So there's always uh, that chance that you will get to uh, try out two entirely different sets of players in these two different tournaments and pick the best going forward. Yeah. So uh, maybe that will happen. Just look at the midfield right now. Uh, there's uh, Laldan Mavia, Udanta, uh, of course in the wing, uh, Semin Len, uh, Dhanpal Ganesh is there, Shovik Chakrabarti, Muhammad Rafik is there, uh, the invisible man himself. Uh, Roland Borges, of course, has to be there. Uh, Pranay Haldar is back uh, after that injury layoff. Uh, and good to see him back right now. Uh, Anirudh Thapa, Bikash Jairu, Holicharan Narzari. The core of the midfield that we want to see out there against a team like New Zealand. You know, would have been good if South Africa was around, but they went somewhere else. Uh, but, you know, it. This looks like, you know, you can pick easily four or five players out of here who will spearhead your midfield. Yeah, the Udanda Singh obviously makes the cut. Uh, first choice for me. Uh, Roland Borges would have been perfect if uh, Lindo would have, would have been available. But you know, everybody is just hoping and praying that he can be back to his full fitness. But again, he's aging also. No, you have that problem uh, when you have you know uh, age not being on your side, and then your uh, your your fitness is giving you a lot of trouble. So it just makes it difficult for the player to come back to uh, full fitness, and probably you know he might not even make the cut uh, even before uh, the, the Saturday. Roland Borges? No, I'm talking about Lindo. Okay. Yeah. So Borges, you know, he, he I I feel he will be uh, one man who who needs a partner to complete him. No, we we've seen that partnership work very well for for India in, in the recent past. 
but off lately we saw a lot of holes being created in the midfield uh, so you will require someone with a, a cool head in mind like uh, Dhanpal, Dhanpal Ganesh has really pro proved himself and he's got some experience on his side and uh, he got some games with the ISL uh, and I, I think th it's a great addition for him to try you know for Constantine to try him out in the def defensive midfield but then what happens is uh, when you pair him up with Borges it becomes a little more too defensive you want somebody to have uh, the attacking instincts I I'm not sure no, what combination can work best in the central midfield but Udanta Singh uh, Dungil is a great addition he's got pace on his side uh, so I, I don't have a problem uh, seeing him uh, as, as a new tryout in this camp of course, we have the fabled uh, I'm not talking to you situation continuing between uh, Brandon Fernandez and Romeo Fernandez and uh, Stephen Constantine. I don't know how long that's going uh, going to continue, but it seems like those players once you know, considered prospects, they're no longer even in the conversation right now. Uh, is it is it more due to the performance, their recent performance, do you think, or is it due to the situation they have going on with what happened after 2015 ISL? I don't know. No. Brandon Fernandez is one name that has been standing out uh, to be called out for, for the national camp selection, but he's always missed out. And, and I wouldn't speak strongly about him because, again, he, he's got problem of uh, not being fit for all the matches. So even though his talent you know, speaks a lot for himself, but he misses out on that uh, the, 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 the strong uh, attacking, that, that physical factor, uh, which I feel you know it can be worked on very well by Subhuk Chakra Chakraborty who's coming in. Looking at the attack that we have right now, it's going to come down to that one or two goals uh, that we can probably score against teams like Kenya and New Zealand. I'm not being too hopeful. One or two goals is that is all you you feel we can we can do the best. We are playing Kenya, not Macau, so uh, you know we, we're not gonna we should not be too impractically hopeful at this point. But you know Sunil Chetri is back. You know God knows how much we missed him uh, in the uh, game against Kyrgyzstan. Balwan Singh is also there. JJ got a goal against Kyrgyzstan. He's there obviously. Manveer Singh, interesting addition. Uh, Alan Deori and Ashik Kurunian. Manveer Singh, you want? Manveer Singh has been part of the camp before, so I I I don't think uh, it's a big surprise. And and he's got long legs. I think, I think that's required for for some you know uh, pacey attacks. So you require those you know the next generation striker, and I think Manveer just uh, no, it's probably there. Uh, he just needs some more time. Just I was uh, thinking about who could be a you know reliable uh, alternate in the national team, especially if you're uh, facing a situation where either uh, JJ or Sunil is not available, uh, and uh, you know you are playing uh, Sunil up on the left or uh, you know, Balwant a little bit withdrawn or JJ a little bit withdrawn. Who else can come in and fill the gap? The first name that kept coming to my mind was Suse Raj, not Manveer. So I was actually thinking that Manveer could get replaced by Suse Raj in this team. Didn't happen. Why do you think uh, Suse Raj is not making the cut yet? Again, uh, is it the ISL I, I League de debate that we is should this be one having? one guy, one guy from uh, I League who's in there, East Bengal's Mohammad Rafiq. Nobody else. Yeah, you know, uh, it just makes you think: uh, is ISL uh, too much uh, to to show for for the for the national team uh, selection camp? And I League hasn't really uh, no, performed. Uh, not a player from uh, Minar or Punjab, the champions of uh, the India. You know what, what's missing there? <laughs> uh, then they play the uh, the game of their lives in every match that they played, and I think I think we have to ask those questions. Uh, probably, what is the next generation uh, players that we see? Uh, Ashik Kurunian, I don't know. No, what what uh, grounds uh, he makes it? He's probably okay. Uh, he's been uh, on on the travel. He's been to uh, the Yellow Submarine. and he's uh, been to Villarreal and he's come back. Uh, probably we don't uh, know how he's performed there. But again, you have the stamp on your on your CV that you've been uh, overseas and you've come back uh, with some experience uh, and and maybe that's the ground that he's got into the national camp. Yeah, Ashik Kurunian's inclusion looks more like come to the camp, I want to look at you kind of an inclusion. right? And of course, Stephen Constantine repeatedly tells the press uh, that uh, if you play you know my brand of football you're welcome in my team so it, a lot of players which do well uh, all don't make it you were talking about Vinava Punjab you know uh, and other I league uh, players 
you know there's a, there's people who say is he watching i league games is he watching isl games uh, i think he is i think he is he's not going there but um, i i can't imagine the national team coach not actually watching <laughs> the national league games but uh, part of the reason why i think uh, i league players may be falling short is, is because increasing foreigners in the league so a lot of teams are uh, dependent heavily on foreigners so the indian players don't get to shine as much could that be a reason i don't know that that's uh, i i won't agree you know even to one bit on that because uh, this was one season where we saw uh, the best of indian players uh, bring out their talent and so many goal scorers from the indian side as well we have not seen this uh, at least uh, in in the previous season where the indian players were more you know reliable because uh, it increased yes it increased the number of foreigners but also you know indian players had to fight for the position they had to fight uh, for the position in the next game as well it wasn't for just one game or two games you know, they had to be you know looking uh, again what is the extra uh, extra bit that you have over over the selection of the other player so I, i i don't think there should have been a, a debate where isl is a, great, a greater pool than uh, the i league uh, i really wanted to see some some balance over there but sadly it hasn't been yeah of course uh, so many new uh, and players also came out of the i league you know new talent uh, from neroka from shillong lajong uh, all of these uh, clubs who had to rebuild their teams uh, isol fc as well minerva punjab arrows so many good players uh, came out of that maybe though maybe uh, you know giving a chance to them uh, in the saf championship would make sense because uh, you you're playing against again nepal you're playing against uh, uh, bhutan uh, and bangladesh teams like that so i are yeah. you saying that the uh, you know, uh, dominant dominant uh, isl in in the intercontinental cup and dominant i league players in the saf championship I'm saying uh, giving youth a chance in the SAF championship make, makes more sense because uh, if you're going to try to win every game uh, going up against Kenya or, or uh, uh, New Zealand you want to have your more experienced players on board while whereas in SAF championship you can take chances like giving Lalian Zuala Changte a start and he actually delivers I mean Lalian Zuala Changte is also not there in the squad I would like to think that he's going to be there at the South Championship. So different tournaments can lead to different approaches. I hope they pick somebody from Indian Arrows into the uh, South Championship team. Uh, also there is there is an under uh, 16 championship going on I think at the same time. So Arrows is not covered by it. So Arrows players will be free in September. Pick somebody. You know, g- let us see how they do against uh, Maldives or Bhutan. Uh, you think you want you want uh, Sunil Chetri and uh, uh, Balwant Singh and uh, Sandesh Jhingan to win you those matches as well. So anyway, uh, this is how where we are right now. Uh, you know, uh, again I'm saying I don't want to second guess Stephen Constantine at this point because the only way you make sense with your criticism is if he doesn't win games, right? He's been winning back-to-back games, losing away at Kyrgyzstan is not the biggest blemish that we can think of. So if we win against kenya if we win against new zealand all the criticism we can level, level against him it is false yeah. doesn't it because in the end a co- all a coach can do to justify himself is win matches and what else can he even expect it to do is it yeah yeah that's there you know uh, when your results talk for yourself uh, that all the criticism just fades away and speaking of constantine one issue has been really passionate about over the last few years is having persons of indian origin in the national team playing for india uh, and uh, one player uh, we have heard about in the last few days uh, is aaron williams uh, the australian national who, who has an indian mother uh, who was playing for neroka uh, and uh, he he's been talking about that he's trying to get uh, his uh, indian passport uh, what do you think you you were just talking about uh, anas not being at the full form do you see a future uh, that you know Aaron Williams can be a partner with Sandesh Jhingan uh, i think he can uh, even uh, match up in the midfield with uh, probably Borges because uh, uh, the role that he's played for Neroka you no know, it just uh, it, it, he's he's a complete package uh, to have even in the defense and you just move him uh, one step ahead you no know, play him that uh, defensive midfielder you play him that you no know, lone central midfielder 
he can do the, both for you I, I, and he can be a great addition uh, just to have uh, the, the the Australian experience he's played in the A league as well uh, yeah, yeah and no no th this uh, at, and he's not too old as well you're not talking 24 about, we're not talking about somebody who's 30 plus you who's uh, nearing is 35 basically step aside Michael Chopra <laughs> Yeah, and, and this has been talked about but never been implemented. I hope uh, this can be the first step and uh, no, probably uh, policies can change for the better. And uh, you know, this, the, the wealth of experience that uh, the PIOs can bring in, we, we might just see a, a small revolution in the Indian team. Well, uh, of course, he's talking about uh, how much he wants to get the Indian uh, citizenship ship before uh, the Asian Cup happens so that he can be in contention to make the squad. But then again, he's been in India for just over a year, yeah. right? Uh, he came to India in uh, 2017 and we have seen other sports persons struggle with this as well. Uh, for the last couple of years, Tanvi Hans has been trying to get Indian citizenship so, so she can play for Indian uh, national women's team. Uh, right now, she's playing in an amateur league, right? Why? Because the Indian women's league is only for Indians. You know, unlike I-League and ISL, they don't have foreigners playing in the domestic league. So, she, she's got no chance to play the game professionally in India till her uh, cit citizenship comes through. And the rule that, that usually go by, uh, people usually go by, uh, the rule of thumb is that you have to wait two years. And you have to work, work in India for two years uh, to uh, get your visa, uh, you know, passport. Uh, done. It usually takes longer. Remember, Arata Izumi came to India in 2006, playing for East Bengal. His national team debut came in 2013. Took him a long time, right? Uh, he, I think, uh, his pro process was uh, not seven years, of course, but it was about three, four years. Do you think there's any chance that uh, Aaron Williams breaks that jinx? Uh, that's, it's a too short a notice to you know, uh, see Aaron Williams in, in the Indian squad. Uh, because we've got a dearth of talent in, in the current I-League and ISL uh, where you have you know, homegrown players doing so well. So Aaron Williams you know, probably will have to wait another year or so. Well, of course, it's not even that fair to just, uh, you know, if, if it's a two-year thing and they cut it down to one and a half years and just before the Asian Cup, they say, okay, he's not an Indian citizen. It's not even fair to Aaron Williams to just say, okay, Chalo, you are uh, stra going straight into the national team because if you want a new player to come in, you want to try him out in uh, tournaments like this, the Intercontinentals, the South Championship or in a friendly or two, before you want to put him out there in the big stage. Remember, uh, Aaron Williams or any other PIO who wants to come in and play for India, uh, change their passport, none of them have played for a national team before. So, it, it uh, you know, I think it's a bit of a... Uh, unfortunate struggle that they have to go through but we did speak to Aaron Williams himself about it he was joining us from Malaysia we asked him about all this uh, these uh, aspects uh, of uh, uh, you know uh, shifting citizenship that he's going through and more so listen to it hey Aaron thanks for taking the time to talk to us you know your father is from Britain and you have an Indian mother and you grew up in Australia so yep. what was your childhood like was it any different from the other kids you were growing up with pretty much just a normal Australian kid really just going to school playing football every day uh, with my brothers and um, and yeah just a little bit Indian on the side pretty much you know I had the curry every, every once in a while with my, at my grandparents house and, and yeah pretty much just an Australian lifestyle growing up and now I've got an opportunity to to go to India I'm really trying to grasp with everything I've got. Yeah. Yep. Well, you were a part of the Burnley youth system. Uh, did you have a preference uh, for a club? Uh, was there a dream of a particular club uh, that you wanted to play for and was it in England? Um, yeah, you know, I really enjoyed my time at Burnley and, and my goal at the time was to, to play first team football at Burnley and I didn't quite get there unfortunately but I've always wanted to play for my hometown club which is Perth Glory and I got to do that for two years so that was a goal that I'd met and then um, the next goal that I'm after is to represent India at national team level and that's something that I'm looking to do in the near future. Right, and now you're in India. How did the move to India come about? Uh, were you interested in coming and playing for Neroka FC or uh, did you just want to come to play in India and uh, Neroka FC happened to be a really good uh, pick that was available for you at the moment? Yeah, well, I, I put the feelers out there and said that I was interested in coming over to India and playing. And, um, and yeah, Neroka came forward and said, 
um, were interested in having you, and I, and I said yes straight away. It was an opportunity that I wouldn't, that I would never have turned down. So I'm really happy that it's turned out the way it has. We had a fantastic season, and uh, you know, we exceeded a lot of expectations, and I really enjoyed my season. So hopefully, there's more to come. So you moved from uh, Perth to uh, Imphal, and a very different country, very different culture, food habits. How did you get adjusted to this new environment and this new club? Because uh, not only were you in a new country, you were also in a very young club who were playing in the top division for the first time. So it was a learning experience for everybody. So how was your uh, yeah, acclimatization process here? Pretty much everything. Everything was new. So it was. It took a little while to get used to, but. Kate, my partner, she came over with me as well, which made the transition a lot easier. You know, we met some really good people, um, became really good friends with Fabian Vorb, Guru Singh, Randy Singh, a couple of the boys um, that have been in Morocco for a little while as well, and made us feel really welcome. So it wasn't that hard of a transition. Uh, once we once we settled in, we really took it in in our stride, and you know, I think it showed on the pitch how well we all played together. Now this was Neroka's first ever season in the I League, and uh, you were in the uh, title race till the very last day. Was that something you expected, or was it uh, really surprising that you're going into the last uh, day of the league and you have a chance to actually win it on your debut season? Well, you know, we, I spoke to a lot of the boys who played in the I League for, for many years, and they said that, that our squad was one of the best that they've ever seen. So. On one end of the, the spectrum, it's, we set a goal that we wanted to be in top four, and then halfway through the season, you know, we're doing really, really well, and we thought, why not? You know, we, we gave it everything we could, you know, a couple of results didn't go our way, but that's football, and uh, we're happy with, with where we finished second, you know. We, we finished above some, some really big names in, in Indian football, and just fell short to, to the Nova Punjab. So it was a great, great season for Naropa as a whole, and I think that uh, next season will be just as exciting. Now you were suspended for the last game against East Bengal when uh, Niroka were making the last push uh, to try and win the title. Uh, if you, did you travel with the team and uh, can you tell us what was uh, going on in the dressing room before walking out? Uh, you know the, the intensity of it that you could just go out and play and uh, you know become champions hopefully. Now I was back in Info and I was watching it with my partner in in, uh, in my room. It was. A- and I think I nearly had a heart attack, you know, we were 1-0 up and, and Minerva was 0-0 and at that point in time, I think about 35 minutes into the game, we were, we were winning, winning the league. So, and then obviously Minerva scored and, and then we ended up drawing one more with East Bengal, but it was, it was pretty uh, heart-wrenching to be honest, it was hard to watch and I wish I was out there at that time, but you know, it was the rules, I guess. So what are your plans for the upcoming season? Are you staying in Neroka or are you looking at somewhere else? Uh, I'm not sure yet, you know, obviously um, I really enjoyed my time in Morocco and it would be great if I, if I was to enjoy another season there. But yeah, I just have to wait and see what happens really. Um, there's a couple offers on the table, but I'm not sure what, what's going to happen just yet. But at the end of the day, my main goal is to get my passport and hopefully we're still in the Asian Cup. Have any ISL clubs come calling yet? Uh, not that I know of, it's all in, in uh, my agent's hands, so he doesn't tell me anything, which is annoying, but... Yeah, just have to wait and see. So let's talk about your dreams of playing for the Indian national team. Uh, is this something uh, that you have been pursuing for a long time, or is this a recent uh, line of thought that uh, you have pursued? Uh, yeah, it's only been maybe in the last four, yeah, three or four years. Really, my granddad was around. You know, he would he would tell me about his times when he, he used to play in India in front of 150,000 fans, and, and it was something that really caught my attention and something that I was. That I've really wanted to follow in his footsteps, and, and yeah, I think that he would be he'd be proud of the way that I'm learning so far. Uh, who did your uh, grandfather play for? He played for Tata Sports in Maharashtra and West Indian Football Association. This process uh, of uh, obtaining an Indian passport, uh, you know, it's it's. In a bureaucratic way, it's a pretty hard process. Uh, they don't make it easy for anybody, and uh, usually the process takes uh, well over uh, two, three years. Uh, what's the approach uh, that you are taking? Uh, have you found a way? It's very. Um, it would hard hard to put a percentage on it, to be honest. But, um, you know, we're, we're speaking to some lawyers. My management team is speaking to some lawyers about the best possible avenue to go down. So we can get the passport as soon as possible. It's just a bit of a, a, a tricky situation, but we just have to 
keep waiting. It's a little bit of a waiting game, but hopefully we can get it done as soon as possible. So far, how has the process been? Is it uh, looking encouraging? Uh, are you making uh, some headway? And uh, do you think uh, it's possible to happen uh, you know, before the Indian uh, team plays in the Asian Cup? Yes, definitely. You know, it's something that um, we've definitely looked into. We've spoken to Arata a couple of times as well. And, um, and yeah, we're in quite a similar situation, to be honest. And, but hopefully there's, there's something that we can do to hopefully speed the process up a little bit. But it's out of our hands at the moment and really it's down to the Indian government. You know, uh, the national team coach Stephen Constantine has been quite vocal in the past couple of years about uh, the potential benefits of allowing uh, persons of Indian origin to change their nationality probably and uh, play for the Indian national team. Have you spoken to him? Have you met him and uh, spoken about this uh, subject? Um, I'm pretty sure my agent spoke to, spoke to him, but I'm not. I can't say yes or no whether, whether well, I haven't spoken directly with him. Maybe it's something that I should... I should think about doing, but yeah, hopefully he's um, he's been watching some of my games, but we just have to wait and see. You know, somebody who has uh, done this uh, in the recent past is Arata Izumi, and the process took about uh, three, four years for him. Uh, Tanvi Hans is uh, another name uh, in Indian football. Uh, she's been here just over a couple of years, I think. She's still waiting for her passport to come through. Uh, so, what you are proposing, you know, in terms of uh, playing in the, uh, you know, being eligible uh, to play in the Asian Cup uh, 2019, is just that. It's never been done that fast before, as far as I can remember. And uh, do do you are you aware of that? And do you have any particular strategy for that to get it done in time? Yeah, well, that's uh, that's always a little bit of a tricky situation. You know, it's something that hasn't hasn't really happened before. So maybe we're we're hoping hoping for the best, but we just have to wait and see. Really, you know, you have to you have to be in the country for a may, uh, for a minimum of twelve months. So that's something that we're coming close to now. So hopefully once the 12 months goes past, we can get to put the next steps forward. You're in Malaysia now. Does that take away from your time in India? No, no. From the first time I arrived in India to 12 months later. I just mentioned Tanvi Hans. Uh, she's pursuing the same thing that you are. Have you spoken to her uh, recently? Uh, have you discussed uh, this thing with her at any time? No, I haven't, to be honest. It's all like I've left um, that side of the passport situation down to my, my management team and just so I can concentrate on, on the football side of things, to be honest. It, obviously, it's gonna, it's very um, tricky situation and there's a lot of uh, paperwork and stuff to go along with it, so that's why I've got the management team to sort out all that side of it. Well, I hope you every bit of luck, man, uh, with the next season, with this citizenship process uh, and with your dream of playing in front of 100,000 people, which only happens in the Kolkata Derby, by the way. So I hope you get to play in that game uh, sometime very really soon. That'll be a dream come true, I think. Thank you, mate. Thanks for the call. So you heard him, he's earnest about his efforts uh, to play for India, you know, it's not like uh, Michael Chopra who tried to play for India without changing his uh, passport. He wants to change his passport, he wants to become an Indian citizen uh, who, uh, to play uh, for India. Uh, but again, this is a socio-political issue, you know, the, the rules that the Indian government places uh, on players who can represent India in the international stage, uh, it, it's, a, it's a political thing. Uh, and uh, there's no other sport other than football which, where there is a PIO issue. You know, you don't hear about this in cricket or uh, tennis or any other sport. Only in football we hear that, okay, let's maybe get uh, PIOs, uh, you know, give them fast track to Indian citizenship and have them play for India uh, so that we can improve our rankings or improve our performances. Is it that likely that the Indian government will change their policy for one sport? I don't think it's a policy issue here uh, or there's a condition for uh, a PIO in a particular sport to wait for some period uh, before applying for visa or even uh, before applying for the Indian citizenship and, and it's more in, in the, I think it's the culture that we built you know uh, probably we don't uh, you know a, you know, we're looking at your own uh, pool of talent before we would try uh, try to uh, move to the other nations uh, nations ideology. We, we've seen uh, UAE do that, and uh, we are far away from ca coming close to breaking that jinx. 
well under fifa rules you are allowed to represent a country that you are not a citizen of you know lots of uh, players have done that historically but you know india does not partake in that then uh, requ- uh, you know recognize neither dual citizenship or a non citizen uh, representing india so that is uh, something we have to work out i'm pretty sure we will be following this story for months to come uh, for now thank you for uh, watching this episode uh, we are as uh, as much as you are hoping that uh, indian team uh, performs really well whatever the squad may be uh, every time the boys in blue go out there we are always uh, cheering out there for them uh, let's hope they win all of their matches in the intercontinental cup and we'll come back next week so thanks for so watching